Hi folks, welcome to chapter 7, lecture number 3 uh, in our series 27th lecture. We were talking about the uh, resonance uh, tra transformer um, for the measurement of high capacitance. Uh, we did uh, discuss that uh, particularly in case of uh, long lengths of uh, very high voltage 500 kV and 750 kV cables and even if you have something like 25, I mean not too much of length comes on a drum, 25 meters or 50 meters is the, perhaps the maximum, that forms a lot of capacitance unlike uh, even the transformer and uh, gas insulated system. So when you test with AC uh, power frequency, the uh, capacitive charging current drawn by a very high capacitance formed by the insulation of the cable is very large. So the requirement, the current requirement, current is uh, gives the max uh, magnitude, whether it is uh, uh, reactive current or uh, um, uh, um, uh, real current, uh, current has its own magnitude. So reactive current increases tremendously. So we can compensate uh, the capacitive uh, current with the help of inductive current. And that is the resonant transformers used specifically for the purpose of testing very high capacitive value of the equipment. So we did discuss about this factor Q factor and uh, what happens is that the 1 by Q is works out to be as you can read here 1 by Q works out to be omega CR and the uh, um, oh, oh, yeah uh, let, let's start show you further slides. Yeah, this is the way and uh, a reactor can be connected to the transformer. I mean AC power frequency transformer. It can be connected in, in series or it can be connected in parallel as you see in these two diagrams. And uh, th this diagram and as you can see even on the um, slide this this reactor is a variable inductance reactor so we uh, can set the uh, reactance of the variable inductor by uh, changing the air uh, distance between the uh, core and the winding the air gap you can say why is by changing the air gap you can change the reactance offered by the reactor that is that makes it variable inductor or uh, uh, variable inductive reactance can be achieved because everything for every time you test the test object may not have the same capacitance. So you have to compensate according to the magnitude of the capacitance so that as far as possible the inductive uh, reactance is equal to the capacitive reactance. That is what you, we have see, uh, we have learned uh, in the earlier uh, lecture also. Uh, yeah, the inductance of the reactor that is L is varied by varying its air gap. Its operating uh, uh, range is to set to 10 is to 1. That means you can uh, increase or reduce in a ratio of 10 is to 1. That is the normal operating range of setting the inductance offered by the variable inductor. So it's a vast uh, change in the 
value of inductance and that makes change changes in the inductive reactance offered by the inductive reactor so this would this is the uh, for, um, photo and the uh, also you can see in the lab in this case you can see this is a drum load of very high voltage cable under test and the variable inductor is at the back here so seen at the back here so this is how in high voltage laboratory high capacitive value uh, test objects are tested there is another possibility as we uh, we uh, we talked about uh, we uh, yeah when we compensate we'll we'll talk about another uh, um, variance when we compensate the uh, capacitive reactors with the inductive reactants the active power required uh, is if it is 100% um, tuned from both the reactances there will be requirement of only active power and that active power you can imagine under for when you are testing a, a dielectric is the active power loss in the dielectric that is what we have estimated with the help of tan delta you know that and the, uh, it also helps uh, when you compensate this way the magnitude of the short circuit current is also brought down because the total current drawn under the resonant condition is very small the so the magnitude of the short circuit current uh, comes down then the voltage wave shape is improved when the reactive current is not being drawn so the voltage wave shape of the power frequency because it is being now applied only to the resistive uh, load uh, improves by attenuation of harmonic components already in the power supply the uh, voltage wave shape is improved then what happens that the practical um, uh, practical figure uh, of the application of the fundamental voltage amplitude at resonance is between 20 and 50 times it is reduced the uh, the practical figure of the amplification of the fundamental voltage amplitude at resonance is between 20 to 50 fundamental voltage amplitude is increased that means you have to uh, on the primary side uh, output is increased in what ratio would the output be increased that is the q factor as we have learned the q factor the q factor the the we uh, if we go back I'll, yeah if we go back as we see here the we see the the voltage across the capacitor is is v by omega cr that is the q factor this is equal to vq isn't it and therefore where v here uh, is much much smaller than vc uh, uh, that is uh, uh, divided by by the i mean the value of the q uh, which is uh, less than uh, 1 hmm? and so the total require vc uh, v that means v the applied voltage to the test object or the test transformer is much less and that ratio uh, has been uh, uh, estimated to be to 20 to 50 times it reduces if you had not compensated you would have needed to apply much higher voltage uh, to the test transformer 
So that is a very big advantage. And uh, if we read another advantage is the power required from the supply is lower than KVA. When the voltage, yeah, power supply from the, uh, yeah, I should change. Yeah, here, as you can see last but one point, the power required from the supply is lower than the KVA in the main test circuit because the magnitude of voltage you need to apply is very, very small. It represents only about 5% of the main KVA with, a, uh, with unity power factor. I mean, if we didn't have unity power factor, if we didn't have compensated the uh, rea capacitive reactive power, mm, you would have needed much higher voltage to be applied at the test transformer, primary of the test transformer, and which reduces at unity power factor to the tune of only 5%. This is a very big added advantage of uh, compensating the uh, reactants, the capacitive reactor. There's only one disadvantage uh, is that uh, uh, the, the requirement of additional variable chokes capable of withstanding the full test voltage and the full current rating. I mean, that, that means you need in the laboratory an additional choke or you can say is the uh, reactor a choke or you also call in some people, I don't like to call it choke. It is the, a reactor or rea uh, yeah, inductor. Inductor or reactor is a better word than choke. Some people write it uh, uh, variable, variable inductor, you can say, or variable reactor capable of withstanding the full test voltage. And if it is, say, 1000 kV, the reactor insulation should be in a position to withstand the full uh, test voltage. As you can see it here in this diagram, the reactor has across it uh, the same voltage as uh, being applied on the test object, that, that is the C test, as you can see in this figure. So the reactor must also withstand the full text voltage. That is. Uh, that means the insulation requirement of the reactor is considerable. So little high cost it does have. Yeah, another possible way of doing all this is uh, here we talked about a, an, a reactor with variable reactants or variable inductance. Isn't it? Now, how can you compensate the inductive reactants and the capacitive reactants? We did learn about it. That is, if we say uh, XL is equal to XC, and XL you know is omega, um, omega L, and uh, XC is 1 by uh, omega C. Uh, so, when you increase the frequency, XL would go up and XC would come. Uh, um, yeah, XC is 1 upon omega C, so XC will reduce. So if you can, uh, when you have high XC, you can reduce it by increasing the frequency. That means uh, instead of changing the value of the inductance or induct, uh, reactor, uh, inductance of the reactor, a simpler way would be if you make the whole test at higher frequency and you tune the frequency in such a way till you get XL is equal to XC. So such tuned uh, frequency uh, resonance transformers can be seen here. On the left is not a tuned frequency. 
resonance transformer test set on the left as you see a photograph of 1600 kV AC power frequency resonant test system this is the test system a resonant test system in which you change the value of inductance uh, uh, and on the right hand side you see a variable frequency resonant test system for on the site testing what do you mean by on the site testing uh, sometimes it happens that uh, you have to uh, uh, take the test system and test an equipment after installation at the site where it has been installed how will you do that you have to take the test apparatus the high voltage uh, ac power frequency uh, test gen uh, transformer has to be taken there if it is very heavy it is not possible so as you see in this diagram uh, in a system uh, components on a trailer b is 800 kv 0.5 ampere for gis testing on site gi this is gis testing is going on on site with the help of tuned frequency ac power frequency test transformer in the c as you can see a 550 kv 1 ampere a uh, 1 ampere for transformer testing on site this is the transformer test testing on site is going on after the installation of the transformer at the site in d you see uh, 1200 kv 0.5 ampere system and uh, this is much lighter as you can appreciate this is much lighter than as you see on the left side uh, in figure 710 uh, 1600 kv uh, power frequency resonant test system when you have tuned frequency test system the whole test transformer acquires a very small size and that is of great importance and uh, then in e 1200.5 system and in on the right most f as you see that is again 1600 kv 0.5 ampere mm, uh, tuned frequency uh, resonant system so this diagram f you can compare with this diagram in figure 710 as you can see the uh, in the middle in 7710 uh, figure you see a variable inductance uh, reactor in this case it is the uh, variable inductance reactor with variable frequency and that is in the uh, left side it is the value of inductor by air cold inductor by changing the air gap so that becomes heavier compared to the when you when you uh, get the desired magnitude of uh, reactive power uh, inductive react reactive power by changing the frequency i mean you can uh, equate the the uh, inductive reactors with the capacitive reactors by tuning or by providing uh, tuned frequency I mean higher frequency when uh, the whole size of the equipment reduces and that is more suitable for site testing so I think with this uh, we can um, close the uh, uh, AC power frequency test transformer um, generator sets you can say so next we will go to uh, generation of high dc voltage voltage multiplier circuits 
which is a high DC voltage is produced with the help of voltage multiplier circuits, we learn what is a voltage multiplier circuit. What happens in the, this, uh, this case, as you can see, is that uh, where do we need DC high voltage system in the whole world? Today, it is the AC power frequency, great AC power frequency system for the consumption, for the uh, transmission, even generation. It is the AC power frequency which is there. But where is then high voltage DC? That is a question, isn't it? So, uh, you need, you do have, let me tell you, uh, lately in the last uh, um, four or five decades, the high voltage DC is being utilized. That is, we call it HVDC, as you can read here, high voltage DC uh, uh, transmission system, as you can read here, is utilized for bulk power transmission from point to point. It is especially suitable for I mean, such kind of transmission lines, so DC transmission lines are especially suitable for large amount of power transmission from one point to other. M means what? It is uh, not economical, it is not desirable to tap the power in between. Suppose the uh, location from where you want, you are generating power and the load is far away, maybe 1000 kilometer or even more. So you may choose a high voltage DC transmission line instead of high, high voltage AC transmission line. Because, uh, but the only restriction there in case of high voltage AC transmission line, you can make a substation uh, in between or at suitable uh, distance between the two points and draw the power, you have to install the transformer, step it down and you draw the power. But in case of high voltage DC lines, to tap the power in between length is difficult because you would need a, an inverter station and, and all again. Uh, uh, inverter station and rectifier uh, fire station. I mean, equipment costs increases. So it is suitable from point to point. High voltage DC transmission has posed other problems also. Let's not bother about that at this instant. So the uh, another uh, use of high voltage DC test sets is for uh, scientific research work. There are certain kind of scientific research work which acquire, which need uh, high voltage DC for, uh, uh, I mean, which require high voltage DC for conducting the research work. Then you would also say, yeah, as uh, we were talking about the high frequency, AC power frequency test set which can be taken to the site because of their low uh, weight. The same thing is true when you want to test an equipment at the site. So far it was being practiced, it is still being practiced that at site that even the AC equipment is tested with DC because the mobile unit of DC is much lighter and one very important thing you can imagine, when you apply DC to an equipment, what do you test? You test always the insulation, the dielectric behavior. So when you apply to a capacitor DC, will there be any charging current? No, there won't be any charging current. So the power drawn by the test apparatus is very small and the 
that means the voltage has to be the required magnitude but the current drawn by the test apparatus is very very small so when the current reduces the you know, size of the dc test set also reduces considerably uh, then you need dc you know who needs more not the electrical engineer so much but the physicists in physics dc is used for example for particle acceleration for accelerating the uh, small particle molecules you know, for particle acceleration uh, or acceler accelerators uh, electron microscopy uh, there also you need the particle ac uh, accelerators and uh, so the physicists use this even in x-rays it is used then then you might have heard electrostatic precipitators and nowadays it is a compulsory for all thermal power stations to install in the chimney electrostatic precipitators in even in our country it is must which precipitates the you know, uh, particles in the smoke at a desired place and that the electrostatic precipitators work with dc high voltage dc then uh, yeah electrostatic uh, uh, painting guns are on the same principle uh, uh, electrostatic painting guns are you in use for a good quality of painting on any uh, object electrostatic spraying is more effective for example in all automobiles uh, the painting is done with the help of electrostatic painting equipment and then uh, uh, and powder coating it is also utilized for powder coating then you might have learned in physics also the van de graaff generator that is nothing but particle uh, accelerators where the like polarity uh, charge uh, particles are collected uh, at a certain location when the accumulation of like polarity charge uh, particles takes place it acquires very high potential and van de graaff works on that uh, principle for mm, yeah these are the applications of high voltage dc you can say electrostatic generators and uh, particle accelerators van de graaff generators so there you need high voltage dc now the as you can uh, read in this point uh, therefore the requirement of voltage shape voltage level current rating short or long term stability for every high voltage dc generating system may differ strong from its application to application it will differ from uh, each other with the knowledge of fundamental generating principles it is possible uh, to select proper circuits for the uh, for any special application uh, of high voltage dc so that must be taken into consideration then the high dc voltages are generally obtained by means of rectifying circuits applied to ac rectification of ac power frequency because that is freely available everywhere it is in use so the high voltage uh, dc uh, uh, generators are generally obtained uh, i mean the high voltage is obtained by means of rectifying circuits applied to ac 
voltage and uh, after that after rectifying with half wave or full wave normally it is the half wave rectifier circuit is used we'll see in the next uh, uh, a very interesting circuitry is developed known as voltage doubler circuit whatever you are getting the voltage from half wave rectifier circuit the dc voltage from half wave rectifier you connect in such a fashion the uh, voltage doubles now voltage doubler circuits are very commonly used and uh, you can use desired number of voltage doubler circuits in series one after the other to get the desired magnitude of output voltage because the you know, from uh, one voltage doubler circuit the output is added in series with uh, the uh, next voltage doubler so the voltage keeps multiplying or it is cascaded the same way as we had learned the cascade high voltage ac transformer circuit the voltage gets added up so uh, the desired number of number are then used in cascade for the multiplication of the voltage and these are uh, described as you will see yeah as you can see the the uh, in the diagram let's let's uh, come to the diagram first and the diagram the half wave rectifier circuit is be used i will will voltage doubler is not at there half wave rectifier circuit we will analyze the high dc voltages are generally obtained by means of rectifying circuits applied to ac voltage voltage doubler circuits in uh, in desired number are cascaded then later what is in half wave rectifier circuit you must have learned in the earlier courses what is half wave uh, rectifier circuit here as you can see uh, the capital d is a diode power, of course power diode and c is smoothing capacitor c we call it to be smoothing capacitor to uh, retain the magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor uh, when you are uh, applying a dc voltage across the capacitor rl is the uh, resistive load the uh, uh, rl is the resistance of the load you to the half wave rectifier circuit on the left as you see the voltage output is shown on the right side and you must have learned it also the voltage uh, being rectified would the magnitude of the voltage output across the capacitor the same voltage is across the load rl is not constant it is changing uh, uh, over the cyclic order of the ac power frequency so when in positive half uh, wave the voltage acquired uh, across the capacitor is th this one and uh, for the next positive cycle the voltage uh, reduces there is a loss of magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor because of the losses various losses and in that you can say the difference of uh, how many uh, yeah mm, the next cycle will come after 20 milliseconds isn't it the voltage drops to a certain uh, magnitude and the fluctuation uh, between the two uh, yeah so uh, the this uh, as you see if you had rl to be infinity they wouldn't have been drop in voltage across the uh, test object uh, 
uh, you can say or across the rl if it was r if rl was infinity but when rl is the load resistance is not infinity the there will be some losses in the resistive load and all insulation have some resistance it may be of the order of um, hundreds and even thousands of mega ohms but some resistance every insulation uh, offers so what we are talked talking about rl is the resistance offered by the insulation because what we are uh, actually testing with all these apparatus is nothing but insulation so the there is uh, voltage fluctuation when the load resistance is having a finite value and this fluctuation is you know is nothing but the ripple so we will derive a uh, uh, equation here as you can appreciate very much that if uh, uh, u bar is the arithmetic mean value of the output voltage u bar is the arithmetic mean this is given by 1 by t uh, uh, integration of 0 to t of u d c uh, uh, vary in the last you can say the u d c uh, as you can see this is the uh, two peak values of the two and u d d c what you are getting from the output is you can say this is the value okay Uh, where T in this equation represents the periodic time required for the power AC power frequency, uh, power frequency uh, or the power supply cycle, which you know will be equal to T is equal to 1 by F. So for, for power frequency, it is, you know, is 20 milliseconds, 50 hertz, 50, 20 milliseconds. Let the amplitude of the ripple what we are interested in ripple is the fluctuation of uh, the voltage applied on the test object when the resistance offered by the test object is having some finite value let's call it delta u delta u is given to uh, by this as you can see oh, no sorry ah, delta u is this is giving you the delta u okay this 0.5 u max uh, uh, minus u minimum the maximum and the minimum voltage fluctuation across the test object and the ripple factor is given by delta u by u so this works out uh, the charge q transferred to the resist uh, resistance offered by the test object of the resistance offered by the dielectric or insulation of the test object um, is given with this equation as you can appreciate and q will be equal to i t or you can t is one uh, 1 by f so i by f the current uh, i is the current drawn uh, I, as we can see here the yeah as you can see here current is not shown but yeah it is shown here it load current shown here as you can see so the uh, variation in the load current il uh, uh, is uh, given in this way and th that is how delta u works out to be i upon 
टू एफ सी आई अपॉन टू एफ सी दैट इज द रिपल विन से द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ रिपल इज डेल्टा यू सो डेल्टा यू वर्कस आउट टू बी आई अपॉन टू एफ सी यू मे नॉट हैव मच कंट्रोल ऑन i but you can have control over f and c so if you increase the frequency of the power supply instead of 50 hertz you take higher frequency you can reduce the ripple and if you take a higher capacitive value of the smoothing capacitor this is the smoothing capacitor this is the c in the formula comes out to be so if you uh, increase the uh, capacitance uh, value or uh, you can also change the ripple you can minimize the ripple by changing f and c so this is what is the simple half wave rectifier circuit and the ripple offered by the half wave rectifier circuit So now the voltage doubler circuit, as you can see, is connected here. A very simple connection connected further uh, to the half wave rectifier circuit. So the voltage doubler circuit. This is your voltage doubler circuit, as you can see it here, uh, connected. to the uh, i mean a, a, a slight modification in the connection of you add another diode and uh, the this works this is half wave rectifier circuit with uh, another diode and another capacitor makes it the voltage doubler circuit so when you apply in this circuit uac peak here the rectification uh, uh, is done and then uh, the output you get is uh, dc output is 2 dc is equal to 2 u max 2 here uac peak is equal to u max uac peak is u max and the output you get 2 dc is equal to 2 u max 2 u max i'm just wondering i think this 2 should not be there u dc is equal to 2 u max yeah this is a mistake here uh, you will Uh, appreciate u dc is equal to 2 u max you get the voltage voltage doubler circuit output and when you connect number of voltage doubler circuits in cascade one after the other in series you can say this diagram is showing you the voltage doubler circuit in cascade so as you can see here you are applying an input here to be uh, uh, ac input is there the peak value we are working with because it is the peak value converted into the you know, dc maximum value and uh, as you can see here at this point this is the stage uh, capacitors as you can see c1 prime c2 prime and c3 prime three stages are shown in cascade and uh, 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 c1 c2 c3 you can make it to be equal and this is the uh, uh, smoothing capacitor as you can see it here c uh, and the diode are uh, d1 and d are connected in the same fashion as a in the figure above there so the at this location 
the voltage is obtained is 2u is equal to 2u and uh, that means 2u max also is what we had here no? and with the voltage doubler circuit you can at this location you will get 4u and at the output of the third stage of the voltage doubler circuit you would get a 6u uh, uh, voltage so every time the 2u is being added in the output so this is the high voltage output uh, voltage uh, of the dc generator the voltage doubler circuit in cascade are being shown and both full wave and half wave rectifier circuits produce dc voltage uh, less than the ac maximum voltage because of the efficiency will not be 100% they will be slightly lower uh, when higher dc voltage voltages are needed a voltage doubler or cascade rectifier doubler circuit are used as you can see in this this is a um, very high voltage dc generator circuit this diagram is a, the typical circuit of very high voltage dc generator used in various laboratories the number of stages of the doubler circuits can be decided upon the output voltage desired and this is how uh, I, in case of voltage uh, half wave rectifier voltage doubler circuit this is how the voltage is being added to get the 2u max output and when you this is the, when you go for number of stages you get the output in this way so these are the voltages uh, the diodes are conducting at the positive half cycle and in this case the positive at the d1 prime is conducting at the negative half cycle yeah as you can see in both uh, half cycles the diode is working that means it is working like a mm, mm, yeah full wave rectifier so that is how the voltage is added and you get very high dc voltage yeah this is a typical uh, photograph as you can see here is the is uh, very high voltage as i said this is 2000 kV high voltage DC test set and uh, this uh, would this DC test sets have got uh, current rating to be very very small this may be half an ampere or maximum one ampere of current because as I explained the uh, uh, when you apply DC to a capacitor there is no charging current requirement it is only the current required by the DC resistance offered by the dielectric which is very very high to the tune of hundreds and thousands of mega ohms so the current requirement is very low so there are number of stages I am not mistaken mm, one two three four five stages in five stages that means each stage output would be 400 kV in this test set and the electrode where you're getting such a high voltage is on the top and that is there you can get maximum to the order of 2000 kV DC output so this is how the DC generation takes place and this is how the DC uh, generators are designed in the laboratories the um, as i mentioned the requirement of dc generators is very specific so 
all high voltage laboratories may not have high voltage DC generator test set, but uh, it is always desirable to test. Uh, I mean, for uh, you may need one day DC to be applied, or you may need mobile test units, and in the physics departments you would see particle accelerator, Van de Graaff generator. That has got completely different principle. Let me tell you, the Van de Graaff generator, the uh, electrostatic charge accumulation system, uh, does not have by any chance this kind of, of voltage doubler circuit. That is, the principle is completely different. So this is a continuous DC output by the high voltage DC test generator. So we will uh, call it a day today. And next, in the next lecture, uh, in the fourth lecture on chapter 7, we will be talking about the uh, impulse generators in the laboratories. We need more uh, um, and we can utilize or we uh, need to test uh, the uh, electrical insulation system of apparatus with impulse voltages which is more important as compared to uh, the DC test set. We'll be talking about that in the next lecture. Okay.